Welcome to a short but special episode featuring two of my favorite bands, Led Zeppelin and Genesis. As you know, I've done the making of several Led Zeppelin albums, Genesis Calling All Stations, and the story of Phil Collins and Live 8 1985. So this video, I had to do. So I recently watched a 37 minute interview for the Genesis Reunion Project of 2014. These were of course shot and conducted by experienced British filmmaker John Edgington. As the band was discussing their work relationship with design team Hypnosis, guitar legend Steve Hackett made a shocking revelation that ties in to the Led Zeppelin timeline. I decided to email Mr. Edgington to obtain his permission to use a small snippet from the interview here on the channel. He was very kind and greenlighted my request. All interview footage credit goes to John Edgington and please, please check his incredible archive on his YouTube channel. You can find the link in the description below. It's a must for classic rock fans. Genesis' relationship with Hypnosis began with The Lamb Lies Down on Broadway, which they recorded right after Led Zeppelin left Headley Grange for physical graffiti. Uh, it was a lovely house, well it was in its day. Is that Led Zeppelin had been there? <laughs> and bad company. God, it was that uh, they'd left the place in a state. I mean, uh, Genesis thought Storm Thorgerson was a difficult man, and Phil Collins felt because they were not Pink Floyd nor Led Zeppelin, they received lesser treatment. They were treated different. Anyway, Genesis' first Hypnosis album cover became an iconic piece of the story. Peter Gabriel left past a promotional tour, and the band began recording sessions for their next album, A Trick of the Tale, October through November of 1975. So here comes Steve Hackett's revelation. Check it out. You know, he give you this idea and, and tell you that, you know, Led Zeppelin and Floyd had both rejected this one. <laughs> but yeah. It was good enough for you. <laughs> yeah. No, but th there was an idea that he presented to us and everyone said no and it ended up as a, as a Zepp cover and it's that one with the black thing standing in the middle of the table. People sitting around like, sorry, oh, right. I can't remember yeah, the name yeah, of the yeah, album. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Looked pretty good actually. Yeah. <laughs> According to Hackett, they saw the album cover idea for Presence before Led Zeppelin. At first I thought, was this for The Lamb Lies Down on Broadway? It made me wonder. Now if you watched the documentary Squaring the Circle, the story of hypnosis, they talked about Presence having the object resembling the one in 2001, A Space Odyssey. It was a rectangle shaped thing on the cover. Now it was Jimmy Page's idea to give it a twist thus its final shape was born. Now is it possible Storm and Aubrey Powell offered this to Genesis first? By the time the band finished recording A Trick of the Tale, Led Zeppelin started the recording sessions for Presence at Musicland Studios Munich in November 1975 and spent the rest of the year in exile, including a brief rock and roll jam in Jersey. You can check the making of Presence here on the channel. So it's possible the hypnosis meeting Steve Hackard talks about took place in the UK on Christmas 1975 or January 1976. Genesis 7th studio album was released on February 13th, 1976, just one month and 18 days before Led Zeppelin's 7th record went out to the public on March 31st. Although Genesis worked with Hypnosis once again for Wind and Withering, released in December 1976, this one steps away from the present's timeline. Also, it can be The Lamb Lies Down on Broadway, the one Hackett was referring to because Led Zeppelin didn't work with Hypnosis in 1974, but designers Peter Corriston and Mike Dowd, who came up with the visuals for Physical Graffiti, which you can also check the making of here on the channel. So if we follow Steve Hackett's recollections, a trick of the tale could have looked like this instead, while Led Zeppelin's presence would have a different album cover. Because Hypnosis had an endless supply of recycled ideas, maybe Presence could have used the one for 10cc. Who knows? I find it strange no Genesis stuff was mentioned on the Hypnosis documentary outside of Peter Gabriel. Fun fact about a song on A Trick of the Tale, track 3, Squonk, was inspired by John Bonham's drumming, as well as Cashmere, a song Banks and Rutherford were huge fans of. I was a huge John Bonham fan. I mean, that's really me putting that hat on and just playing that kind of solid thing. We really liked, sort of, we were big fans of Kashmir by Led Zeppelin and that sort of, that simplicity of that drum part, the sound of it is fantastic. Both Led Zeppelin and Genesis recorded at Polar Studios in 1979 and 1980. Both bands also worked with Hypnosis one last time for their ninth and eighth studio albums. Once again, I want to thank John Edgington for his invaluable footage 
and I hope this sheds light on what it could have been for presence. Thank you very much for watching, and as always, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, and stay tuned for the next destination. Bye-bye.